It's Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, home of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, Hot 107.9. You know who you with, Reese in the middays. Uh, hopefully after this, I got another friend of the show. This guy, I've been watching him on a big and small screen for quite some time now. He is one of the actors that is really making strides in this industry, man, and I love some of the pieces of work that he's done. I just told him I was a big fan for these uh, cameras started. Russell Hornsby is in the city with me. What's going on? Man, rolling like an old man river. Okay, then. We're going to do quotes along. all day. This is going to be a quotable <laughs> experience. Make sure you get your pens and pads out. We got the man, the myth, the legend. Talk to me a little bit about what's going on with this show, The Hunt for Bone Collector. Yeah, Lincoln Rhyme, Hunt for the Bone Collector, based on the novel uh, of The Bone Collector, uh-huh. written by Jeffrey Deaver. And we all know about the movie from 99 with Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie. Yes. Who originated the role. You know, I'm basically stepping into the Brother D's shoes and uh, seeing how they feel, walk around them in a little bit mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, make them, you know, fit my feet a little bit better. There you go. Uh, I-, I like that. You know what else I like? This is a tie-in on different levels. I was just telling you, I was still mad at Denzel the way he was treating you in fences. Right, right, So right. I was a little bit upset about that. Wouldn't come but, up with that money. <laughs> yeah, I know. Come off it. He's just trying to live his dream. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? Yeah, no, we all are. I mean, and this, this is a dream for me, yeah. you know. Uh, I, honestly, first of all, working with Denzel when you know Fences on Broadway and also doing the movie right, right. was a dream, and it's one of those things where you feel like he tapped you on the shoulder and said, "You the one," mm. and that's kind of come to fruition. You know, me brothers who got some got some heart, who got mm-hmm. some talent, got the ability to get down, and he said, "You know, you've been showing improving, so you know, go get it." And you've been going to get it, man. The hate you give, Creed 2. I mean, the list runs long. Yeah. The IMDb <laughs> kind of looks like a receipt when I leave Walmart. <laughs> you go in for one thing, and I got $6,000 worth of stuff, and that's how your IMDb looks. Yeah, I mean, man, how know. does that make you feel as as one time you were a guy who wanted to do this? You know, that, that's that 20, 25-year overnight success. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, hard work does pay off, and, uh, you know, and you got to have talent, you know, and – I'm, you know, I'm mentoring a lot of young people now, college students, people who are just out starting, you know, their careers, and I'm telling them you have to, you know, you have to invest today. Mm-hmm. It's every day, you know. Um, you can't look at, you know, one job or two jobs as a whole career. Those are just jobs, but you got to be able to stack them and build towards a career. And you have to just go after and chase what you love to do and get better at it. But at the same time, I think the key is. You know, putting life first and getting better as a human being. That's the most important thing because that's what, in my opinion, uh, informs the work. Man. It's who you are as an individual. Say it again for the folks in the back. I'm telling you, man. He's dropping knowledge, dropping gems right now. We with Russell Hornsby, if you're just tuning in. We're talking about kind of his run in Hollywood and, and how strong it's becoming. This is like you keep hitting these second legs and now you got this TV series. Yes. Uh, what's, what's the biggest difference for you between working in TV and then working in movies? Well, you know, the, the the aspect about television is uh, the, the pace of TV. Mm. TV is fast, right? So you're basically shooting a, a whole film in seven or eight days. Mm. And whereas with, with a film, with a movie, you're doing two hours, you have anywhere from two to three to four months, you know, to, to shoot put that everything film. Together, so you, right. have, you have a lot more time. Gotcha. And they take their time. That's why you see different, you know, looks on the camera, just beautiful landscapes. And, right, you right. Know, and the visuals are so specific and particular. And with television, it's like, let's get on here. Let's shoot. Knock it let's out. go. Mm-hmm. So when you show up, <laughs> you, you better got be to ready. be prepared. You got to know those <laughs> lines. They ain't playing no games. You might get one or three takes at it, max, and then they moving on. I like and it. And so it really gets you. It's a great training ground, mm. you know. So I came from the theater. I go to television. And then when, when I was going to the movies, they was, was like, this is like, a hey, breeze. What are we doing? Right. We're They're still like, on this end. wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we ain't even started. It's lunch. We ain't started shooting yet. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. I get you. And, uh, but it, it's really, it sets a nice discipline for you, mm-hmm. you know, as an actor. So, but I enjoy all of them, though, because, you know, you get a check. Get a check. with that. Hey, I know she is. Russell Hornsby's in here schooling us a little bit about the differences of television and film. Now, this show, uh, tell me the ups and downs of it without giving away too much. I'm yeah. excited to watch it myself because we're familiar with the movie. Well, you know, you know, Lincoln Rhyme is uh, what I like. And it, he has the, uh, an encyclopedic mind mm-hmm. and, a, and, a, and an encyclopedic memory of the city of New York. He's a forensic, forensic criminalist who was rendered paralyzed from the neck down. And he's now going back after the man who paralyzed him, the bone collector. Yeah. And so we're talking about a, a, a man, a black man, who can uh, only has mobility from his neck down mm-hmm. and his three fingers on his right hand. Mm. And so this brother is all, it's all about what's in his head. Yes. And so what, what we're really showing with the film and with the, with the show and with the character is that when you lose one sense, you gain the capacity of, of your other senses. Mm-hmm. And now this brother, you know, 
the sense of of it, how his mind works and and how he thinks, and just having the capacity to galvanize people on his team and give them opportunity to really work with him and have a willingness to work with him to try to solve these crimes and find and find these bad guys. Hey, that's a very good take on that. Now, did this change you at all with trying to prepare for this character? Because I know some people, they get all the way into it. Mm-hmm. So you wasn't just at the house laying in the bed, was you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, when I, when I look at these characters, you know, being now in my uh, mid-40s, I look at it as a, it's a life preparation, mm. right? And so with a character like this, I couldn't have played it five or seven or ten years ago mm. because I didn't have the patience. You know, gotcha. I I have the temperament. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I have I have why I got two kids. I got a lot more patience. My temperament is down. You right. know, you don't fly off at the so hand. You're doing a lot of negotiation every day. Yeah. Yeah, I got a three year old. I get. And, it. and so you know, I got to work <laughs> from a place of stillness. And you know, it's that whole thing we talk about. Stillness is power. Yes. Right. Less is more. Mm-hmm. You know, when we when we talk about when you go out, and you see the the rah rah folks, and you look to the coy, look to the right. You see, ooh, ooh. Well, who was that? Who's that? Who's that brother sister in the corner? Right. Quiet. Still, right. You go. Who's just watching what that's, everything? What that's about that's uh-huh. you know that always becomes the person you want to know. Absolutely, right. And so I think that's where the the, the character is so profound mm-hmm. is that he got he has gained power from a, a sense of stillness, mm. not having to move at all, using his voice, using his vocal capacity mm-hmm. to command attention, and also obviously it's what's in his dome that he has that really commands the attention. Right. Because, again, when he speaks, he has something worthy of people listening and hearing. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that because I like to say that a lot. You have a voice, but what are you really saying? And I think a character like that will not only entertain us, but it'll also give us something to eat off of. Like, you got young brothers out here dying and and, and making bad decisions physically Mm -hmm. because they're not, like you said, being still and thinking. Right. Well, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the key. And what I try to encourage, you know, young artists, young actors, honestly, is to take their time. Mm. You know, don't be in a rush. Don't, you know, don't chase anything. You know, let it unfold. There's a saying, that, you know, that we talk about in theater. They say, don't take the breath, allow it. Mm. You know, so it, it gives you a sense of ease and a sense of purpose. And so you're now, you're there, you're ready. Mm. And, and so I think when people, when we try to rush things, Things come too fast, and we're not prepared, and mm. we're not ready. Right. And, you know, we, we, we think that we've gotten there, and we've earned it, and the money comes fast, you spend it quickly, mm-hmm. all those things. Everything's supposed to be about a building block, mm-hmm. right? So, so you can appreciate so you, yeah, it. Yeah. Right. So Savor it. It's like having that good food. You eat a bit That's by bit. Right. You, you close your eyes when you chew a little bit. I done made myself hungry. I got <laughs> Russell Hornsby in the building. We're talking about this, this, uh, this epic TV series. And he's going to be playing Lincoln, man. And this is just something that we all are looking forward to. Uh, you have anything coming up on a big screen? No, I mean, honestly, I, I took uh, six months off mm. to prepare for this role. Yeah. You know, uh, when the role was coming up, I said it was about preparation for the role, but also about taking time with my family. Right. I tell you went to Disney. Thing. Was this during his time? Sorry? You hit Disney World. Was this during his time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> exactly. okay. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Going with the kids and everything right. like that. I love it. And that's what, you know, and now that I'm a little bit older, it's about it's about quality, not quantity. Say it one more time. You know, quality, not quantity. Okay. You know, when I was coming up in my 20s and 30s, my nickname was Hustle. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't a job <laughs> I didn't say no to because I had gotcha. to get that money. I had to have those opportunities. I had to take that time. Uh-huh. But now that I've done that, Mm-hmm. Right, I have all that experience right in the rear view. Now I can be a lot more selective. I understand. And so for me, it is it is about laying the, that groundwork with my family, with my kids, with my wife and everybody, taking that time because that's what enriches me now for mm-hmm. the role, for the work, for the character. So important. It's so you know, important just that's in the life. Soul food, right. right, I get that's it. That's the food for uh-huh. thought. You know right. what I mean? And so no, so to answer your question directly, I don't have anything coming up. I'm looking for a second season of this, and now I'm just being selective about the next project I take. I love that, man. I hope you guys are listening, especially all my up and actors, artists, musicians, whatever. That just holds true on so many levels, even with a regular job, man. Man, I appreciate your time, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Reed. No appreciate doubt, it. man. And tell everybody where to follow you at on Instagram. This dude's Instagram is funny. It's entertaining. <laughs> it'll make you want to go home and get a wife if you don't have one and, and, and hang out. You well, know what I'm saying? If you want to check out the swashbuckling hero, the man, the myth, and the legend, the one that put the hump in the camel's back, the lamp cracker, the ass smacker, <laughs> The baby maker, the cradle shaker. There we go. Come check me out at Russell Hornsby on Instagram. <laughs> Holler one time. I love it, man. And look, if the 49ers would have won a Super Bowl, he'd end up with another broken Achilles. <laughs> there you go. All right, man. <laughs> a little bit of NFL humor on our way out. This is how 107 now we go.